try at the end of the show. I think we're going to chant like either Daniel Negreanu or maybe Beyonce three times to see if it works for next week. If you guys are cool with that, Beyonce would make a pretty good guest, I think. I mean, they both have good packages, right? Just ones on the front, ones on the back. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm just going to look at my uh, Twitter here real quick and see if it worked. It did. Nice. All right. Um, I'm going to assume that uh, due to have on today, we're going to have a few new viewers uh, hopping in at some point, uh, possibly following us on social media and YouTube. So for those new viewers, um, just give them a little background about what Fade the Mahoney is. Uh, we like to call ourselves the best fake sports gambling show in the world. Um, we typically have really good people on the show who are very bad at gambling. Uh, and that with the name Fade the Mahoney. If you just do the opposite of what I'll uh, say, you'll generally make uh, quite a bit of money. But every once in a while, we mix it up and we bring in people who actually know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, we've had David Baker on. We've had Tuck on a few times. So um, we've got David Tuckman and uh, Daniel Negrano joining us today to talk about NHL. Uh, we need uh, we do a lot of NFL betting around here. And now that the over, we need a new fix. So we're hopeful that you guys will uh, help us find the gateway drug. Does that sound cool? Hey, I'm all about introducing gateway drugs to uh, unsuspecting youth and people around in the world. So this is what I do. All right. Um, uh, we've had some uh, really excellent shows recently, specifically one where we talked about rounders. People have liked that. Uh, some of our recent guests who have been really bad at sports betting include Maria Ho, who got both championship games wrong. Uh, we spoke to Mac earlier in this week, who stuck like $15 million betting on sports recently. Joe Stapleton, who doesn't know what a, what a spread is, uh, was on a couple of times. DJF, both Trevor and Jody Savage have been on. All these people are terrible. So uh, let's see, let's see what you guys, what you guys can do. Um, I was going to turn this into a little bit of a game, if you guys wouldn't mind playing. Um, about, uh, a variety of NHL topics, uh, games, awards, and futures, and I was hoping you guys could discuss, debate. Uh, potentially educate us and then uh Edonk and i are actually going to take our real live money and bet on it um we're going to pair up with one of you Edonk, since you're the since you're the original mahoney why don't you pick which one of these gentlemen you feel best about uh tailing who do you want to tail uh i will tail tuck okay okay daniel you're stuck with me i got uh, a bunch of faith in you okay buddy um we're each going to start with a thousand dollar bankroll uh we're going to bet based upon what you guys suggest today and uh whoever wins the most is actually going to collect an extra thousand from the other gentleman um <coughs> we'll post all of our picks and tuckman for today only we are not sponsored by bet river illinois i'm okay with that i'm okay, okay. with that i have my uh hold on Got my uh, my Bet Rivers hat though. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm here for that. So uh, right. yeah, no, it's all good. It's all okay. good. As long hey, as you. By the way, you followed me last night, right? You went three and one. I went three and one. Yeah, yeah. I was at the Oiler uh, Kings game. Uh, it wasn't a very good, well played game by either team, but Oilers pulled it out for us. Yeah, um, you hit the big underdog. That was the Islanders suck right now. I'm a diehard Islander fan. I know it. Uh, Daniel knows it as well. I, I was uh, I have been on the Islanders the last two years because I know they were underrated. This year, the market has been slow to react to the fact that they suck. Um, yeah, what did we get? I got one seventy five on that last night. I think plus yeah, one seventy five. It's beauty. That sound right? It's beauty. Okay, so I'm going to use all lines from Bet Rivers as long as they're available. We would appreciate okay. if you uh, you give an opinion or a suggestion for a bet. If you would use our patented star rated system, uh, one is you're only betting it because we make you five is you're super confident or once during the entire episode, you can use the KL Cleeton special. He, uh, 
He's been on the show a couple of times. Good friend of the show. Uh, he, he uses an 11 star special, so you can use it once. And Daniel, I'd like to thank you for introducing KL Clayton to the uh, contest that you had a few years ago. He's a great dude. All right. Uh, first, let's do the uh, three games tonight. Panthers at Hurricanes. Uh, we've got uh, minus 113 for the Hurricanes. Panthers minus 105. You got a strong feeling about that game, Daniel? What was the line again you said just now? I've got the Hurricanes minus 113 with the Panthers minus 105. So this is where I say one, right? <laughs> like one as far as like confidence in this one. I mean, this is going to be a great game to watch. It's on TNT, which is a great broadcast. I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying what they do with the halftime show and stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the Colorado Vegas later on that network too. But I'm a I'm partial to Carolina for fantasy hockey reasons. Uh, I like the team. I like what I like how deep they are. Uh, Florida, of course, they can put up a nine spot any night they choose. It seems like. But uh, at home, I'll give Carolina the nod. Why not? Okay. All right. So I'll be waging on Carolina. Tuck, your thoughts? I am I am equally uh, not – I have very little conviction in this game at all. I mean, these are two of the best four or five teams in the league. I have Carolina at plus 2,200 to win the Cup. They're, they're really good. I don't think people realize just how good this Carolina uh, Hurricanes team is. Uh, the Panthers, uh, obviously, as, as, as Daniel said, super talented – uh, I, I like the, like I said, I mean, the fact that I'm getting a little bit of a better price on Florida, I would take Florida, but I also would go one star. Okay. Looks like we'll be going head to head there. Cool. Um, uh, next game, uh, Ducks at Flames. The uh, Flames are big favorites, minus 230, coming back with the Ducks at plus 190, Daniel. Well, here's the thing. Cal Calgary's playing great, right? I've never been a big fan of laying big juice, but if you put a gun to my head, I just don't see myself, uh, you know, taking Anaheim in this one. Just because Cal Calgary's been as hot as balls, you know what I mean? They're not losing to anybody, um, and I don't see any reason why. Like right now, defensively, they're solid. They've got Markstrom playing great. They added to Foley, which adds even more depth and stuff. And Anaheim feels like you know they're actually way ahead of schedule. Anaheim, right? That, this was a team that was supposed to be really, really bad this year, but Zegris and Drysdale have really sort of uh, made this team exciting to watch. Like they're actually fun to watch, but I do feel like that sort of early season, you know, you know, run they had is, is about to like come back to the mean, um, you know, cause again, they're young. They're not that I mean, when you have like Ryan Getzlav, who's like 107 as your main, you know, your number one center, it's hard to expect them to keep that up. So, I mean, it's hard to bet against Calgary. Again, I don't like laying minus two thirty, but I'm not betting Anaheim. So I'll take the flames. Okay. Uh, usually Daniel and I will argue on some things, but I, I, everything he just said is spot on. I mean, Zegris is unbelievable. The guy's going to be an absolute superstar. Uh, I've got him. I've, he's one of my best to win the Calder, but yeah, the flames are, you know, pun intended. They are on fire. Uh, they brought to Foley and Markstrom's in net tonight. I, I would not bet against the flames at home right now. No way. Uh, I mean, if you want to take a shot at it, you can go. I mean, if you don't want to lay the minus two thirty. You can even go minus one and a half goals. I'm not usually a big fan of doing that. But uh, at plus 112, minus one and a half goals, I'd probably go that way if I was forced to bet this game. All right. Well, But I'll yeah. go one star on that one. That's not a not a, a high, uh, big one there either. All right. If Edonk uh, makes his way back on here, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I'll pass that along to him. Okay, the big game. I know the first game was a couple of uh, big-time teams in the late game. Also on TNT, is that right, Daniel? That's correct. Yep. Uh, Avalanche at the Avalanche minus one thirty-seven, Knights plus one eighteen. Anybody who likes hockey, we should watch this game, right? Yeah, I mean this is huge, right? This is this is drama central. You got Jack Eichel who hasn't played in an entire year. Um, of course, we have the drama with Mark Stone. You know, there's this rumor of Flurry coming back. All kinds of hoopla here in Las Vegas. Um, we certainly keep it interesting since we've been, you know, in this league. Um, but tonight's game is interesting. I'm surprised that the line is what it is. Uh, you feel like Vegas is going to be fired up, but again, it's a, it's a wild card variable with Jack Eichel. You do have Wasson in net because Laner's hurt. Um, but the team's turning the corner. I think, I think Vegas is pretty, pretty well. Colorado is like the criminal crime, but Colorado played last night too, you know, and they didn't do so well against Dallas. 
So, you know, back-to-back nights, Vegas at home, pumped up to see Eichel. I know he's going to be giving it his all. It's in- it'll be interesting to see how many minutes he gets, right? I'm sure he, like Pete DeBoer said, you know, if he could, he'd play 50 minutes in this game, but he'll have to, you know, scale it back. But Vegas at home, even though they've been really bad this year at home, it's like the first season ever where they've been this bad on, on home ice. I'm going to go with just the Jack Eichel, you know, late game winner and say that Vegas pulls this out plus 118. Okay, that's where I'm going. Okay, we, uh, we this is where we hard disagree. Not only do I, I like Colorado, I love Colorado. I actually bet Colorado with my own money earlier today at minus 126. The line moved up to like minus 140. It settled back down to minus 137. But I got them at minus 126. Uh, Daniel already mentioned the, the you know the the home mystique, the Vegas flu they used to call it the first couple of years. That's gone. I mean, Vegas is 14, uh, basically 14 and 12 at home this year. They're actually better on the road than they are at home. Um, no Mark Stone tonight. No Robin Leonard tonight. They got their backup goaltender in there, and you know. Eichel is an amazing player, and I think everybody in Vegas should be excited about this guy. And I do think Vegas is going to make a lot of noise when they get to the playoffs because Eichel's going to be there. Stone's going to be there. Maybe Florio will be there as well, as Daniel alluded to. But tonight, I mean, you're looking at Eichel, who hasn't played a competitive game in, I don't know, 13, 14 months. And, you know, no Mark Stone, no Leonard and Nett. Colorado has lost two games in regulation over the last two months. One was last night. They're going to come in angry. This is a game Colorado wants to win. I think Colorado and Colorado, by the way, is going with their number one goaltender, Darcy Kemper, tonight. So I think Colorado is just at this point tonight. Colorado is a better team. I don't care about the home ice. I am I am heavy on Colorado. I'll give this one four stars. I would have given it five stars earlier today at minus one twenty six, but at minus one thirty seven, I'll go. I'll go four stars. That's real live sports betting talk right there. That's a sharpie, uh, Edonk. I don't. I don't know what happened if I hit something or what happened, but you missed that. Uh, Tuckman likes the middle game, and he actually likes him on the puck line. He wants to get the plus one uh, twelve on the uh, that, puck line. That 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 analysis of that uh, that Avalanche game sounded like some real Mahoney shit right there. No, we're we're going to be going head to head. Uh, I mean, Daniel Daniel knows his shit. Listen, I mean, Daniel's not somebody I normally I would ever want to bet with. I think I've made one bet with Daniel in my life, and I lost it. So the fact that he's on the other side is – Yeah, the fact that he's on the other side is, is strong. I just I, – I have no I have no, I have no, dog in this fight. I'm not a Vegas fan. I'm not a Colorado fan. But I, I just I, – I think a lot of times people expect that, like, oh, guy's coming back. And it's just – I mean, Eichel hasn't played a competitive hockey game in, like, 14 months. Um, so. Yeah, for me, it's less about – Less about him actually coming back and his his impact himself, but more, you know, like part of what happened in Vegas too with COVID and stuff like that is, as David alluded to, you know, we had the uh, the flu issue and like the home crowd in Vegas, really, really loud, hasn't been, you know, it hasn't been as packed. It will be tonight. I feel like the place is going to be rocking and it's going to give him a boost. And Wasson's been really, really good. You know, he's yeah. well rested. He's been pretty, pretty good. Kemper, I mean, he's hit or miss, of course. I do think, and I agree with Tuckman on this, not having Stone in the lineup probably for the rest of the season is a big issue because Stone has been sort of the medicine for, you know, the McKinnons and, and then that top line. Like, he's been the defensive player that has been able to shut them down. There's also another thing going against Vegas, which is obviously you're inserting Eichel, but you're also messing the lines up, right? So now you're going to have some new guys getting chemistry. You know, the Golden Misfits line, that's not going to be the same tonight. They're going to make a slight change, putting Yanmark on there, and Marshall is going to drop down to the third with Stevenson. You know, so and Wa on the right, you know, the fourth line's a lot different than it was. But then you got this brand new top line. So there's a lot of wild card variables, but I'm just a sucker for like plus money. And when you take like a really good team at home plus money against the team that played last night and not so well, again, he, he, as he mentioned, they're using their starter tonight. So they're obviously taking this game more seriously than they did last night. So, I mean, sounds like Dave Tuckman's really, really like uh, hot on Colorado. Can't blame him for a lot of reasons, but. You know, maybe it's a little bit of Vegas homer in him in me that, and also like home ice money. I just I got to do it, even though they suck this year at home. I just feel like this this game tonight is going to like recreate a little bit of like the home ice advantage they've had in past years. By the way, I think Vegas is the problem with Vegas last year. Probably is their I mean their number one and number two lines can play with anybody in the NHL and 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 win. It, it was a little bit of depth issues, but. 
you know, the fact that you bring in Eichel and you can drop, you know, uh, March or so, and, and you can make a good third line now. This Vegas team is going to be really dangerous in, in a month or two. I, I do think that. Um, I just I, – I, and I think you're right, by the way. You know, if you can bet on a top five NHL team at home on plus money, you're going you're gonna to do well over the long run, especially against a team on a, on a, on a back after a back-to-back. I just think – I think last night was a case of Colorado hasn't lost in a long time. And that was a little bit of a look ahead game. This one's on national TV. As you said, it's on TNT, Colorado. I, yeah. This, I, this could be an ugly game. Yeah. We'll say a good one. I think it's going to be a, I think this is going to be a good one. And again, like the fact that it's on TNT, they really learn like TNT just knows how to do it. You know, they obviously did it with Shaq and Barkley and they created that cool vibe and they've done a decent job sort of with the NHL guys that they did, you know, have on the show. Is, is, is having that NHL vibe in a cool way. Like Biz Nasty is great on the show. You know, he's, he's a key figure, you know, in, in sort of like keeping it fun and light. So it's enjoyable. Like I, I enjoy watching the intermissions as much as I do the games when it's on TNT. Yeah. Daniel, how much do we like this one on the star basis? Um, well, I mean, again, I don't, I, I like the price again at home. So I'll give it a three star thingy. All right. All right. Daniel, I legitimately thought, that there was going to be a side bet between you and me in this game. I thought I was like, okay, because I bet on the game earlier today, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll bet a little bit less because Daniel's going to want to bet on Vegas. <laughs> I just, you know, I've been I'm so entrenched in my fantasy stuff no, that I, I don't even it. like. I'm not. I'm just like, yeah, I'm focused on that so much. So I haven't been looking at you know the the, the lines as often. But uh, when I heard Vegas plus one eighteen, you know, they're very rarely home dogs. You know, it makes right, sense yeah. that they are here. But I mean, anytime you can get them at home. I think it's worth it, worth a shot. By the way, I will tell people, and if you are, if you if you are not a hockey fan and you want to get into it, tonight is a good night. You have arguably the four best teams in the NHL, or four of the five, maybe Tampa Bay Lightning not playing tonight, but four of the five on national TV playing against each other. Yeah, yeah that's why we... they've been hot. It's hard to yeah, hard Calgary's to... great too. Yeah. Yep. Who announces on TNT? Year? What do you say, you don't? Who are the announcers on TNT? It's not Miss Hextall. She's the only one that I literally cannot watch the broadcasts on ESPN, and it's not a it's not a sexist thing. Okay, it has nothing to do with the fact that she's a woman. I think she's really bad at the job. Okay, so when she does those late night games, I just have to watch them on mute. I put them on one of my alternate TVs, but. Yeah, I, I mean, in, in fairness, I mean, I hate uh, what is it, Butcheress? Butcheress, the guy who does it. Butcheress. I can't stand him either. But I'm really, I'm spoiled. We have my Islander broadcast guy is Brendan Burke, who they're now they've used him for a lot of national broadcasts. He's amazing. So I'm kind of spoiled. My favorite actually by far is Ken Danico. He does the New He's good, yeah. Games. He's just a, he's a poker player too. He's a good yeah. dude. Like he just he knows his stuff. His delivery's good. He's got a good deep voice. Um, no lull in the action. Yeah, I just enjoy listening to Kenny. I was I was a huge uh, uh, Blackhawks fan when they were uh, making a bunch of their runs, and Eddie Olchek was uh, oh, was yeah. uh, the, the the man, right? So I remember when Eddie fun, really played fun to listen. Toronto Maple Leafs, you know, scored those spinoramas back in like freaking what eighties or whatever. Eddie O. All right, that gives uh, some people, in addition to the Edonk and myself, it gives people some stuff to bet on for tonight. Uh, but uh, you had said. Uh, Tuck, uh, a couple months down the road, you thought uh, Vegas would be a little. Let's can we talk about some uh, futures as far as divisions and conference go? Sure. Um, I mean, futures are generally kind of a sucker bet unless you can really get a dog. But I, I'm all for it. Yeah, we we do lots of sucker bets around here. There you go. Sorry, right. we're all about that. Um, I'm gonna skip the central division unless either of you have any strong feelings that someone is going to miraculously come back and pass Colorado. Oh, you mean to win the division, not to yep. come out of the division. Yep. Well, yeah, they're not gonna they're they're winning the division. But there's right. a team in there that I think um I just think a team there that, that's in that central that is really built for the playoffs. They won the cup recently, they're deep, they're big. It's hard to even say, and I, I'm sure you can figure out who I'm talking about in a minute. It's hard to even say who their top line is, their top second, the second line, the third line. And that's the St. Louis Blues. They're like interchangeable right yeah. now. They're big, they're heavy. They're, you know, Bennington's no longer the starter. They're going with Huso, but they've got at least, you know, two options there. Solid defensive. Like St. Louis is a team that I, you know, my sleeper team out of the central to do well in the playoffs. Obviously, like you said, 
Colorado's winning division, no question. Yeah, the problem with the Blues is, and I think it's kind of the theme of the West, Daniel, is goaltending across the board. I mean, does any does any team have reliable goaltending that you'd feel like ironclad? Yeah, it's safe. I mean, Winnipeg's got it, but Winnipeg Mark- doesn't have a team. Huh? I'm a big Markstrom fan. Okay, like- yeah, okay, that's fair. Calgary's got Markstrom, he's right? Solid, and he's been solid all year. Like I think Calgary's second or third in the league in goals against this year, and he's a big reason why. Yeah, that's that's a good shout. All right, so let's do. Let's start with the Atlantic Division: uh, Panthers, Lightning, Leafs, and Bruins, uh, ranging from plus one twenty down to. Well, I guess the Bruins aren't going to win it, but Panthers you can get plus one twenty, Lightning plus one seventy five, and the Leafs plus two ten. What do you like there, Tuck? Uh, I mean, honestly, nothing real. I mean, I think it's. <laughs> I think it's going to be Florida or Tampa Bay. I mean, I don't think the Leafs quite have that. Uh, my guess is, you know, the Panthers probably take the regular season a little bit more. Uh, seriously than the Lightning do. I mean, the Lightning are back-to-back champions. They don't give a shit about the right. – I mean, they, they literally sleep for half a game. They were losing to the Devils 3-1 yesterday. And they were like, oh, we're playing hockey, and then they won 6-3. Yeah, so, I got to agree with – I agree with you so much on this. Yeah. Sorry that I'm putting you off because, like, Tampa gets it. They don't give a shit where they match up. They just want to be rested and healthy. They understand that these regular season games, you don't go 100%. This is a mistake – the Vegas Golden Knights have been making every season, trying to, you know, get that one seed. And then they run into Montreal Canadiens, who were awful, and they lost because they were gassed. They had no energy. Yeah, I thought, Daniel, I thought the year, by the way, and sorry to cut you off, the year that Flurry played, I don't even know, what, 67 games? And then yeah. was just drop dead exhausted in the playoffs. Yeah. I was like, why is he playing so many games? You need him in the playoffs. You know you're going to make the playoffs. If you do look at two teams there, though, like Florida and Toronto, you mentioned both, of course. Those teams, you know, they're they're in a different space than Tampa. They can't rest in their laurels. You know, Toronto desperately, and so same with Florida, really. Like, there's a lot on the line here for these teams to win the division. Because if you don't, you face a death match, right? Yeah. Like, if you end in the two or the three spot in the Atlantic, you got either, you know, you're either looking at a Tampa-Florida matchup, Tampa-Toronto, Florida-Toronto. That's, that's no fun for any of those teams. And for the Leafs, you know, they've got – a lot riding on this because they've been perennial like first round losers, you know, when they've had this rebuild with Matthews. And unfortunately, if they don't win the division, I can't imagine, you know, that I mean, I think it's probably going to happen to them again. So yeah. for them, I think they have the most incentive to win the division. But Jack Campbell's sort of come back to earth a little bit. He hasn't been as good. So again, we talk about goaltending. Um, so I'm, I would actually think if I had to pick a team, I'm going to go with Florida winning that division. Yeah. Okay. They got two teams in hand over Tampa and they're only one point back. So you have to say like, you know, percentage points. So they're actually in ahead by, you know, 20 right now. All right. Uh, what about the Metropolitan? Uh, Hurricanes are a decent favorite at minus 135. You think uh, Pittsburgh has any chance of passing them? You can get them at plus 175. I think for sure. I mean, Pittsburgh was a team that I was dead wrong on. I don't know about you, Daniel. I mean, this is like a team. It's like, they're like I on paper. You're like three years. They're supposed yeah, to I mean, you, if you don't. You're like, you're like, okay, Crosby's now 40, Malkins can't stay healthy, he's 38, and you're just looking at it going, how do they keep doing it? But the fact of the matter is this team has amazing depth. I mean, they are – they just come at you in waves. They've got a lot more talent than people think. Uh, their defense is better than people think. Uh, I, I watched them last year in the playoffs. What? Yeah. Their number one center is a grinder, and his name is Sidney Crosby. Like, he's a grinder, right? And it's like he just embodies – like, the entire team embodies – Crosby like when Crosby was out Malkin was out Latang is out they got nobody they still find a way to win with this yeah. grinding defensive style you got to take your hat off to Mike Sullivan for finding a way to make it work but again I, I don't think that they're going to win the division you look at Carolina right now they got four games in hand three points back and they've got a lot more depth I think too so I mean I think this is Carolina's lose um you know the Rangers are obviously in, you know in the conversation as well and they've been fun to watch big fan of Jared Gerard Gallant of course Reeves played here too but uh, I, I think Calgary wins that one. I mean, sorry, Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I, I Carolina's obviously most likely to win it. I mean, Pittsburgh's playing just some great hockey. Uh, they have surprised me time and time again. This is a team that I think is still underrated. Um, you know, when when you're thinking about the best teams in the league, they're a clear step below the Tampa Bays, the Floridas, the Colorados. But they're right behind that group. I mean, they're in that St. Louis Blues territory and probably better, in my opinion. I just don't trust. I don't know if I trust Jari in the playoffs. Equal, cool. no. A good, right. a good friend of ours really likes the Penguins uh, because naturally they're like on the ice. You know, 
they're yeah, that's Arctic, good logic, yeah. Arctic animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that makes that makes a lot of sense. It's very, that's that that is that yeah, is a said, that is a bad that, that is a bad dad get. joke, Edunk. That's the usual level of uh, analysis that we get on this show. <laughs> so you guys are really raising the IQ. Um, uh, what do we got left? Pacific, is that right? Yep. Ed minus one eighteen. Uh, the Knights are plus one twenty five. The other two don't appear to have a chance. You think there's any value on? Vegas to win the division at plus one eighteen, plus one twenty five, plus one. Well, see, the thing is, it's a two. It's like a two team race, right? Okay. You know, you, you look at it that way. So two team race, and it's pretty close. Obviously, you know, Calgary's got the upper hand now. That you know, two games in hand, and they are up a point. Um, but uh, I don't know. But this is probably homerish. But if I was going to pick a team to win the division, partly because they care way too much, as I said, it's the opposite syndrome of Tampa Bay, which they'll you know relax. Vegas seems to go the other way and like continues to go all out, you know, down the stretch to try to win the division. And I think that, uh, you know, I, Calgary's been super hot. It's hard to bet against them, but plus 125 in a, what I consider pretty close to a coin flip situation, I would probably go with uh, a couple bucks on the, on the Vegas Golden Knights winning the division. Again, a lot of that hinges on whether or not Jack Eichel just dislocates his neck again and is gone for the rest of the year. Like, we don't know, you know, who knows what's right. going to happen. I'll yeah, I'll go on. I'll go on Calgary. It, it's not. This is not a bet that I'm going to make per se. But if you're forcing me to pick, I'll take Calgary simply because, you know, originally when Vegas was bringing in Eichel, they figured they had to move a player, trade a player to fit his salary in. But there's a you know a cool little loophole that Tampa Bay was able to do last year with Kucherov that it looks like Vegas is going to do with Mark Stone. And if Mark Stone is if Mark Stone is going to miss the rest of the regular season, then I just wonder how good Vegas is going to be the rest of the way. Uh, they're still going to be a good team, but I'm not sure they'll be good enough to get ahead of Calgary, who looks like they're just getting better. Um, there's also a question of, I don't know if Vegas can add anything now. I, they might add Flurry, but well, I don't know what else they can add. Is, is getting Alec Martinez back and Zach Whitecloud, who are both out, right? Yeah. And they help a lot. You know, When is Martinez team. back? He's he's got He's actually healthy again, except he had COVID. And then he's got some long haul symptoms from his COVID, similar to what Yarnmark went through earlier in the season. So that's like that's real dangerous because I'm even when Yarnmark when Yanmark came back, he was like a shell of his former self. Yeah. And people were wondering like what's wrong with this guy? And he could have, he could barely breathe. You know, he's he's got some people it happens to right. So that doesn't bode well. But Martinez is very, he's an integral part of the defense because he's he's literally you know top of the league when it comes to block shots. You look at the goals against average for Vegas this year. Last year they finished number one in the league. This year, they're probably around 20th. And a big reason for that is not having Martinez back there blocking shots. So you look at Laner, you know, his goals above save, uh, save is quite good. It's like five or six. He's doing fine. He's doing well. But the types of chances that they're giving up are, you know, much more significant, partly in, in part because of DeBoer's, you know, style. And he's bringing the defenseman in to pinch a little bit. But uh, I think having Martinez and White Cloud, who's also a very, he's been great. He's been a great addition. Bottom six guy who's, you know, defensively responsible. So those are the ads that they're going to look at, I would say. You know, Laner, it appears as though it's a short-term injury, but if not, you know, potentially they add, and they could if they put him on LTIR and do the same thing. But I don't see that happening. I think Laner's going to be the guy. And I, as you said, Tuck, there's no room to add, and I don't see any adding happening. This is the team that yeah. will uh, be in the playoffs. Yeah, the only reason I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on Vegas to win the division, but I could bet that on them in the playoffs, is Mark Stone. If Mark Stone is going to be held out because of salary cap circumvention, then I, I don't want to put my money on him right now. But all right, can we uh, hopefully get some uh, plus, some decent sized plus uh, bets down here on the conference winners? Let's start in the West. Colorado is plus one sixty five. Vegas is plus three hundred. Calgary plus seven hundred. If you want me to go lower than that, I can look. Wait, is this to, to like? Finish with the best regular season record, or no? This is to to come out and in, in, in the Stanley Cup Finals. Okay, to, to win the conference. Do you want to start, Tuck? Not really, but sure. Um, I mean, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you who I who I bet on, and then a long. I mean, I think Colorado is probably going to come out of the the West, but they they have some depth issues. They have goaltending issues. Kemper can't stay healthy. You know, Vegas could be an absolute juggernaut when Eichel and Stone are paired up. I mean, when that whole team is intact, they could be a juggernaut. You know, we talked about goaltending and hot goaltender can get, can take you a far away. Calgary Flames. This is a legit, this is a really good team. Um, 
and, and Markstrom is great. Uh, I don't think there's – I mean, the Blues at plus 1,000, I guess, are intriguing. Um, I just don't think the Preds have enough, enough going on, although I do like their goaltending. And, and there's nobody else below there that I think. I mean, Edmonton's not doing it. All right. So you like plus 165 E-Donk. You'll be betting plus No, I'll go, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go Calgary. If you're telling me I've got to kick a, a, a kind of a, a long shot more, I'm going to go Calgary plus 700. All right. Plus 700. Daniel, your thoughts? So you said St. Louis was plus a thousand. Yeah. Yep. I kind like I said, I kind of like the way that team is built for the playoffs. And you get Vegas at three to one. Yeah. Plus three hundred. Yep. yep. That's I. So I, I look at those two and those ones. Like both of those teams look interesting to me. Um, again, I'm not really a guy who would you know bet long shots like that. And it, I guess it would be depending on like what I'm looking to do. If I'm looking to have some fun on a real long shot, of course I go St. Louis. Uh, if I look at somebody who I really think has a very legitimate chance. Um, I would go, you know, I would take the plus 300 on Vegas and, and, and run with it. So, but those are the two teams that speak to me, you know, Colorado, you know, you mentioned Tuckman, some of their issues, like this is a team that's done a lot of damage this regular season. And I wonder how similar their issues will be to Toronto Maple Leafs in the past, past couple of years about transitioning to more of a playoff style game. And again, the goaltending issue, Kemper has had good seasons in the past, but it's been sort of like. I, I, I don't trust him, like you said, as, as much as I would Markstrom. Like I retro, I'd much rather do what you're doing, which is take Calgary plus 700 than, than bet anything on Colorado yeah. not the, the, the Western Conference. All right, let's go to the East. Who do we like in the East? Panthers are plus 375. Lightning are the same. Hurricanes plus 450. Leafs plus 450. I can go deeper if you need it. What do you think on that one, Daniel? What was Tampa Bay? Plus, plus 375. Okay, so until they – it's it's like – People say this in poker. They ask me, like, who's the greatest? And I was like, until somebody knocks Phil Ivey off the all-time great list of, like, all the games and all that kind of stuff, I don't care. He's not playing as much or whatever. Until you can knock him off, he's going to be my GOAT. And right now, Tampa Bay, you know, is the elite. Like, when it comes to playoff hockey, they've done it. Uh, and plus 375 on the two-time champ, I don't think they got much worse this year. Obviously, that third line they had the last year was a real – was a real killer, but they did decent to get Corey Perry, who's having a good year. You know, Pierre Edouard Belmar, who's you know defensively responsible. So even though they're going to have a tough road, Tampa, depending on who their first round matchup is, I would, I would, I, I, I see a Vegas Golden Knight, Tampa Bay Lightning final. All right, Tuck. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, I, I do think the Tampa Bay is going to miss that third line. Um, I mean, Yanni Gord, Blake Coleman, that that. Uh, they they're, they just – that depth was, was huge. And, and watching them play against the Islanders the last two years in the playoffs, uh, they were a thorn in our side each playoffs. They're just so good. I mean, obviously the Braden points and the Kucherovs in the world, they're amazing. But everybody at that level has amazing players. So does Toronto, Vegas, all of them. I like Carolina at plus 450. I think that's a really nice price. I, I think this is a really, really good team. Tony D'Angelo, you know, say what you will about him as a person. But as a hockey player, that was just an amazing signing if you just look at it from hockey. Uh, you know, they have not missed a beat. I mean, they lost Dougie Hamilton and their power play has not missed a beat. Tony D'Angelo has been great on the power play. Uh, Slavin is good there. Freddie Anderson was brought in to play goal. He's been really solid. If their goaltending holds up, and that's been the real question in Carolina, this team is really, really good. And uh, it won't be easy, but they, because the East is a, East is a just tough, but I, I, at plus 450, I think that's nice value. All right. And who do you got winning at Kentuck? Uh, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess winning it. What do we get the, what are the odds right here? Let's let me look real quick. You can get 11 to one on Carolina and Calgary, Calgary is 15 to one. Vegas is plus 700. It's going to be ter- t- really tough for them to win it. If they don't even make it, you know, you didn't even pick them to make it. Yeah, but it's just a value thing. You, I'm looking for, uh, you know, I'm looking for 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 where I'm gonna put my money. Uh, I'll go Carolina plus 1100. I will say, like like I said, full disclosure, I have already bet on Carolina, but I have them at plus 2200. All right, which I like Daniel. significantly more. <laughs> Daniel, well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the homer pick. I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the pick that's going to potentially change the rules, the Kucherov, Eichel, Stone, whatever you want to call it, rule. Um, I think it's tough for teams to fade a team that's like 10 million over the cap. And they do so with players that are still in their prime. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on whether or not stones back injuries. Cause like stone did play last season in the playoffs and he was 
he was just not good. He was terrible because he couldn't play. You know, he had that back problem. So a lot will ride on, on whether Mark Stone wins it. But I think this is their year. I do. I think, like, all the pieces come together and, uh, you know, they find a way to beat Tampa Bay in the final. All right. I, I will say, listen, while I'm not betting on Vegas, I, I like Vegas a lot better at plus 700 than I do Colorado at plus 475. I, I just don't – I think that Vegas team, like you said, I mean – uh, this loophole. I mean, Vegas just added a ten million dollar player, and they were already good. And we're losing nothing. Well, we did. Right. That's not true because we did lose, you know, a young rookie in, in uh, Peyton Krebs, but more importantly, Alex Tuck, who's been better than point per game in Boston, in Buffalo. Sorry, playing on the top line uh, and finally getting the chance to shine that he didn't get here in Las Vegas. So we dad we had to give up something, but uh, it was something necessary, I think, for the playoffs. Because one thing that Vegas kept doing in the playoffs the last couple seasons is running into teams that just said, all right, you guys play on the perimeter all you like. Take these stupid shots. You can have 50. You can have 60 shots tonight. You're not getting any good ones because you don't have the game breakers to break down a defense that collapses. They do now. They have a center that can, and that's his name is Jack Eichel. So if he's, you know, he, he can return to form. I think, uh, you know, this could be the year for them. Yeah, I mean, I think also Vegas' Achilles heel the last, at least last year, was their power play. And, and without a good power play, you cannot succeed in the playoffs. Yeah. And... Eichel on that power play could be, I mean, him, Shea Theodore, that, that power play could be electric. I would say Eichel, before Eichel was even rumored to come here, my favorite player to watch in the league before the trade in overtime on three-on-three is Jack Eichel. When you watch him on three-on-three, it's electric. You know, he's such a great skater. He's so, he's got, he's so skilled, so fun to watch. I remember when Buffalo came to Vegas and played, I was like, oh my God, this guy's like a cheat code. You know, yeah, he's, he's like, amazing. Obviously, in the playoffs, you know, you don't have any three on three, but I am excited to see. Uh, I'm really excited about tonight. It's a great night for hockey. Like you said, Tuckman, earlier that, you know, if you're new to hockey, this is a night to watch because it's going to be some some solid drama. For sure. For sure. I, I'm a little bit biased. My favorite three on three player is Barzal. Oh, but, yeah. He's a good one, too. But I, I'm, I, I admit bias. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys have been super generous with your time. Uh, we've got some bets I've got written down that we're going to get into uh, between Edonk and I. We're going to make some bets uh, quick through some of the major awards. Uh, I've got I've got a market for those. Uh, just, you know, a quick sentence or two if you think there's any value in uh, the awards. Is that cool? I will tell you that, listen, the Calder Trophy, the Rookie of the Year, that is – one of the most value bets if you can make it in August and September and October. At this point, it's already kind of been flushed out. But if you are in the know, and Daniel is certainly one of those guys. He plays fantasy hockey. I do as well. If you are one of the guys in the know, you're just ahead of the game. Last year, I was all over Kiprasov. Uh, Kaprasov, uh, the, the, the standout player in, in Minnesota, he won it. This year, I, I was on Zegras early. I was on, and I jumped on Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider. And it's probably going to be one of those three guys. Maybe I get screwed because Lundell in, in Florida ends up winning it all. But the betting, now I just – The betting market says you've got the three. Yeah, no, no, 100%. But, like, I mean, I got Cider at plus 1,400. You know, I got That's Raymond at huh? – whether, whether or not Moritz Cider wins or not, he should. He yeah. absolutely deserves it because I don't think people really understand how much more difficult it is for a defenseman, a young defenseman, oh. to come into the league as a rookie because of the added responsibility that they have, right? Playing a two-way game. It's very, you don't, you often don't see, like you look at a Rasmus Dahlin who's finally coming into his own three seasons in, despite being, you know, a phenom. It's so much more difficult. And the the poise that Moritz Sider uh, has shown, he's like, you know, Detroit's new Nicholas Lidstrom. This guy, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and you've got some flashy players like Zegris and Raymond and whatnot, but I think this is this should be an award that goes to Moritz Sider if we're looking at it in terms of like, all right, who's actually been, the best player, not the best stats necessarily, because forwards are always going to have, you know, better numbers than defensemen typically. But, you know, who's the best, who's the most int integral rookie right now? Who's the guy we'll most want to have right now? Moritz Sider. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Sider, I mean, build a team around a uh, defenseman like Sider. I mean, he plays 22 minutes a game already. Uh, you know, he's, he's a monster. He's a baby too, but. He was an amazing. Uh, too because listen oh six was, and people people panned him people maybe why was like he, he took a lot of heat for that he wasn't even thought to go into like maybe like the late second or early third round and they picked him with a sixth overall pick and people were like well, who the hell is this guy they don't even know who he is and it's like all right well the detroit brass they knew what they were getting and, uh, and they, they got a good one
Yeah, the only criticism you could make is if, you know, if you were the only team that was on him, that high on him, could you trade down and still get him later on? But maybe maybe they just thought, you know, somebody else wants him too. It's While I think – to play, right, when you do that. Because, yeah. like, you really, really want a guy, and then you wait, and you wait. And like, how long do you wait? You know, it might, it might be worth it to just get him. Yeah. By the way, while I think Cider should win it, I think, you know, voters are human, and I think he and Raymond split that kind of uh, Midwest vote. And Zegers has just had so many highlight reel goals, yeah. and he's kind of an island out here in Anaheim. I think Zegers ends up winning it. I would give Zegers the award for most influ- influential hockey player in the league this year. Dude, you know? I can't even tell you, Daniel, you'll love this. So my kid plays hockey, and I'm coaching. I coach a mite team. I coach an under-8 team. And I can't tell you how many times now in practice, in the beginning of practice, we give the kids all like, they have like 10 minutes of free time. Shoot, stick handle, do whatever you want. Every single kid is doing the Michigan. Every one. I got eight-year-olds and seven-year-olds all trying it. Super fun. I mean, no matter what John Tortorella says, like the dinosaur, it's stuff like that is really good for the game. And Zegers, like, if you watch the All-Star game, just his breakaway challenge, oh. like, it's insane. Like, yeah. even if it's choreographed, it's like, holy shit, dude. It's, it's amazing. Like, these? like, a lot of the other NHLers are like, I don't even know how he does that. You yeah. know, so he would be the most influential in terms of, like, for the future of hockey. He's also kind of like a – Fun, nerdy. He's kind of like a surfer. He reminds me of Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He's kind of like he's a perfect. Nerd. Yeah, he is perfect for California. Yeah, yeah absolutely perfect for Orange County. There's, there's no doubt about it. Star. Yep, for sure. All right. So well, we gave uh, we gave you Calder, Mike. Yeah, what what, what else? Um. Well, was what's the coach one? Jack Adams, right? Ooh, that's a good one. The uh, uh, the favorite is plus seven hundred. So. If you guys can pick this one, uh, Mike Sullivan is the favorite at plus oh. 700. Then it goes to Rod Brindamore, Gerard Gallant, Gallant, Gallant. Yeah. I like, I, I, I think it's pro. I think, I think Sullivan's got to be at this point. Finally, the Sullivan finally get his due. I mean, Pittsburgh each and every year in the East, where you look at it going, okay, which team is the team on the out, which team is not going to make it this year. Um, plus 700 is a pretty good price for uh, Sullivan. I'll tell you what I think, though. I th- like typically what what I know what I've noticed over the years when it comes to coach of the year is they're always looking at teams that like did really poorly the previous year and all yeah. of a sudden we're in the playoffs, right? And that team this year, it's not Pittsburgh, it's the Rangers, right? Gerard Gallant all of a sudden, you know, you know, comes on board and you know they're solidly in a playoff spot. I think this 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 award is up for grabs, and the last thirty games will dictate where it goes. If Pittsburgh wins the division, Mike Sullivan, you know, goes to the top of the list, of course. But if Gallant you know, continue to push and, 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 you know, crack the top three there and Pittsburgh fades a little bit, but I, I like both of those two. I, I don't know that Brenda Moore is going to win this. Um, Calgary was already a good team last year. He didn't win it. You know, I, I think it's a, a two, two man race, but I would take the better price and go with Gallant because of the fact that, you know, they've shown the biggest improvement. Like Pittsburgh has been good for, you know, a, over a yeah. decade and the Rangers, you know, this is their resurgence after the rebuild. You know, Gallant's already won it once, though, so that's a knock against him. It's stupid the way that this world works, but it's like, oh, I don't know. He already won one. Let's give it to the next guy. They don't think about who deserves the most. They're like, let's make sure, like the Oscar. Well, who hasn't got one? Leo didn't get one. Let's give one to Leo. Oh, Will Smith. Let's give him one. Like, it's kind of silly. So that's probably a knock against Gallant. But, you know, I, I think, I still think he's got a shot to win it in, uh, with New York. All right. Any value, any value going against McDavid uh, for the Hart Trophy? You guys got any thoughts on anybody other than him winning it? I didn't give him that one much thought. Let me look. Ovechkin. I mean, there's always – I mean, listen, you can get a good price on somebody. There's always all – I mean, there's always a chance somebody gets injured. It's hockey. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's. I mean, I, I always laugh at that when, like, one guy is just a huge favorite and the next, the next player up who would win it. I mean, all you need is, you know, you pull a groin and you're out for, you know, you're out for a month, and then suddenly you, that guy's gone. I mean, you look at Huberto, right? Florida does score in bunches and they're like, they're the, they pad their stats, you know, in a six, one game, they'll still have their first power play out there. Right. They're just trying to pound people. So Huberto, you know, he's in on a lot of them. He's at 64 points. Now you see McDavid and dry at 66. So I don't know if he, if as a long shot, you know, I would, you know, I would think it is a possibility. Okay. All right. I covered. Any any market I didn't cover that you guys have a strong feeling about? Any of the other uh, make or miss the playoffs? Anybody you think that's out that's going to get back in or vice versa that I should look up? Or do you think we've covered? I any- would look closely personally at the at the price of the Dallas Stars. 
Eight right. Tonight. Currently, they're like they've got one game in hand, and they're one point out behind both the Kings and the Ducks at four, uh, 55. But I, I think I think the Dallas Stars are good. I'm surprised their record is the record is not even that bad. They're what they're like now. They're 26, 19, and two. But they're hit or miss. Like you saw last night, they took on Colorado and they manhandled them pretty good. So you know if they can just continue to win the games they're supposed to win, which has been sort of like the, the you know the Achilles heel in a lot of cases with Dallas. You know, I think that team can go on a run here and uh, be a problem for a lot of the top teams in the in the conference. I see them as minus one thirty five to uh, make the playoffs. Really? Wow. Okay, and they're out of it right now, so that's interesting. So people are thinking the same way you do. Yeah, yeah. Dallas is a good shout. I mean, I think Los Angeles and Anaheim have been fading, and, and people are kind of expecting them to fade. Neither team was really supposed to be in the playoffs. Dallas is a team, and, and I'll just echo what what Daniel just said. Dallas is a team. With the goaltending woes and question marks in the Western Conference, nobody wants to face Dallas in that first round. I'm telling you right now. I mean, if you're Colorado, if you're Calgary, if you're that, that is not a team you want to face because that's a team that has some veterans. They're playoff savvy. I mean, uh, they they they've had success in the playoffs over the last couple of years when they were there. Um, so yeah, well, we got some dynamic young players too with Rupe Hintz and Jason oh. Robertson. Both like Jason Robertson's come out of nowhere. I know this because I have both on my fantasy team. But Robertson's a guy who the knock on him coming into the draft was like he can't skate and he's an awkward skater. But you know what he does do in every league that he's ever played? Score a bunch of goals, right? So he's proven that, you know, uh, the skating issues haven't been one. And he's continually, you know, after his rookie season where he was right there with uh, with Kippersoff, um, he's continued to, you know, to thrive in Dallas. And I think that, like, you know, they're they're well balanced. They can continue to get good goaltending. Like, like, like Tuckman said, I, I wouldn't want – if, if I were the Vegas Golden Knights, I would hate to have Dallas as my first round matchup. It's one yeah. of the worst matchups you can have. All right. Um, done pretty long. Uh, I got a, a few questions I was hoping to ask Daniel. Uh, Tuckman, you okay for a few more minutes or you want to bounce? Uh, let me bounce. I got to go because I got to uh, I gotta get over to uh, to Hustler Casino for this uh, for a live stream tonight. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and I will uh, I will see you later, Daniel. Good luck to you, my friend. You too, bud. It'd later, be buddy. cool. It'd be cool if it works out, and you guys are interested. If we could circle back, maybe right before the playoffs start, just to maybe catch up on how we. Did yeah, our- I mean, listen, a lot changes. Uh, trade deadline is in about I want to say like three weeks, and it's really interesting right around trade deadline where you see what teams kind of went for it, what teams sold. And, you know, there's oftentimes a lot of changes happen there and you can, it, it does, it, it does affect uh, the betting lines. So, okay, cool. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Tuck. Uh, Daniel, what's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Couldn't name a single Taylor Swift song. Oh. Is it just, yeah, I don't, I'm not a Taylor Swift. I, she's a nice person, I guess, but I'm not, that's not my genre. I what I don't know what I don't even know I really couldn't name a song that Taylor Swift has made. Shocking. Okay. Well, then we'll move on to the next musical uh, question. Uh, we've started a uh, Fade the Mahoney playlist recently, and I'm asking all guests to give me a song to add to it that they like that not necessarily many people know of. So, all right, there's a new band that I just was. They were on SNL, and I freaking love them. And I, I want to make sure I get the name of the song right. Uh, the name of the song. They have two two big hits. Um, it's a it's actually an Italian rock band, and uh, it's called. I, I think it's. I wanna be a slave, I yeah. Oops. Be oops. That's, I want to be your slave. They have two songs. One is called Begging, and one is I want to be your slave. Um, Maneskin. It's M A N E S K I N. Yeah. Maneskin. Oh, it looks like Main. I am adding it right now. Awesome. All right. Now, a question I ask uh, all people uh, last year, uh, after the Lakers got knocked out of the NBA playoffs, they were done playing. No more TV time for them. LeBron James thought it was important to announce to the world that he was changing his jersey number for the following year so that the spotlight would stay on him. If you had a word or a phrase to describe that kind of behavior, how would you, what would you use? Uh, Uninteresting. Uh, I have, uh, we do this thing on here where I read LeBron James tweets. And uh, usually most people can't find them because I make them up. This is a real one. 
after the Rams won the Super Bowl, this is what LeBron James tweeted out. We, Dodgers and Rams, joint parade together with a live concert afterwards to end it. City of Champions. They didn't even win. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question. I just like to point out when uh, LeBron James does goofy stuff. Uh, Edonk had a uh, poker-related question he wanted to ask you because I think some people would like to hear a little bit of poker, if that's okay. You got, we got nothing. Can you hear him, Daniel? Nope. Edonk, try again. Nope. All right, I'll ask the question. Uh, he just wanted uh, what your opinion was on the whole, uh, if you, the uh, Ivy in the back rack thing. Did you have a strong opinion about him not getting the money? Yeah, pretty strong opinion. They screwed him. It's like absolutely a terrible precedent. They should be ashamed of themselves. You offer a game, right? In your casino, you're, you know, one of your customers says, okay, I want this, I want this, I want this. And you say, okay, 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 okay. You make all, the, you, you, you agree to all the, all the game terms or whatever. And you offer faulty cards on your end, right? How is that on me? Right, it's absolutely ridiculous because they're free rolling him. Even though he had an advantage, he could have lost, right? And if he lost, he's going to lose the money. So that's not right. They shouldn't be able to free roll him like that. Um, absolutely un unfair. Uh, you know, just yeah, I have a very strong opinion. They're scumbags for doing that. The the correct two words: free roll and scumbag. Absolutely, uh, Daniel. You've been super generous with your time. I thank you very much. As I mentioned right before Tuckman left. If you're interested, we'd love to have you back before the playoffs start. Uh, catch up on on how all of our bets uh, have done. Um, so uh, we can discuss that off air. If you don't want to come back on, I understand. But this has been great. All right, guys. Coinc we have a good one. Coincidentally, at the end of March, a bunch of us community that were in uh, the Fade the Mahoney family slash uh, DGF community, we're all going to be in Vegas at the end of March. And Edonk, I'm not sure you're aware of this, but on Saturday, March 26th, the uh, Blackhawks are playing against the Knights in Vegas. So that would be kind of cool. So I suspect you go to many of the games, right, Daniel? I will be when I will, I will be soon. Okay. Not tonight. We're watching it on TNT. Yeah. All right. Uh, everybody, Daniel Negreanu joined Fade the Mahoney to talk NHL betting. That's awesome. Uh, Daniel, thanks a lot for your time. You've been a great sport and, uh, I'm going to be tailing all of your bets, and hopefully I will beat Edonk and win all his money. So thanks a lot. All right, good. Have a good night. Okay.